Hi, I'm Tim Mahoney, and welcome to another Thinker Update. You know, the patterns of evidence that we've been looking at, this whole idea that there are patterns, goes beyond the story of the Exodus and the conquest and goes all the way to the time of Solomon. In fact, we see many other f patterns, and in the future we're going to actually make films about them. And today we're going to give you a peek a sneak peek at a pattern that David Roll in his lecture series talks about, which is about the time of Solomon and where there are patterns of evidence there. Hope you'll enjoy. 1 Kings 10.26 Solomon then built up a force of chariots and cavalry. He had 1,400 chariots and 12,000 horses. These he stationed in the chariot towns and near to the king in Jerusalem. So here we see the Israelite forces are mainly now a chariot force. They've changed from being an infantry force to a chariot force. And of course, one of those cities where the chariots and the horses were stabled was at Megiddo. And this is an aerial shot of Megiddo as it looks today. And what I'm going to show you is that these so-called Solomonic stables, identified as such by the labels that you see when you go to Megiddo, are not, in fact, Solomon's stables at all. Israel Finkelstein has now dated them to the time of Ahab. Actually, I think they're probably Assyrian, these stables. For when the Assyrians captured the region and they put a military garrison at Megiddo, I think these stables there belong to the Assyrians. This is actually an Assyrian palace here, which is adjacent to the stable yard. Later on, we're going to look at this deeper area down here, near the gateways. And I'm just going to show you this wall, which is the boundary wall of the great courtyard where the marshalling of the chariots and the forces would take place. And I want you to look at this wall because this is what they call, in the conventional scheme, Solomonic architecture. Not exactly what you would call an impressive wall. Most of it, as you see, is rubble. Bits of stone that people have picked off the ground are stacked on top of each other. The only bit of major architecture in this wall are these blocks, which we call ashlars. Ashlars are blocks which have been cut with a saw to give you a clean, sharp edge. And they are major construction blocks, and they are important building blocks. This is not. This is cheapo, nasty building technique. So what's happened here is that somebody has come along and dismantled a beautiful building made of ashlar stones and used bits of the building to give spines to these rubble walls. So these are reused blocks from an earlier period, and they probably are Solomonic. But they're not in a Solomonic context in this particular case. Now if we go back to our aerial shot again, I'm going to take you down below what we think is either the Ahab period or the Assyrian period. We're going to dig down deeper to this area where the gateways coming up from the outside lead into the late Bronze Age palace area. Now, remember that this is only the outer edge of the palace. The main part of the palace lies underneath the Assyrian palace. Never excavated, still waiting to be dug. But what we have is just the outer section near the gateway. And I'll go in to show you a bit more detail. This, by the way, this area the late Bronze Age area is contemporary with Ramesses II. So if Ramesses II is a contemporary of Solomon, then this is the part of the site that has been excavated down to the Solomonic levels. If we're now looking at that gateway area, and what you'll see here is a court area with the gate coming in from the outside. And over here is a great big wall which belongs to the outer edge of the palace and what's left of the palace has been excavated out here. I'm actually standing on the Assyrian palace looking down into that area. And what you will see is a set of stairs going up to a higher level. And over here is the remains of another gate. One side of it, the rest of it was on this side. This is the one with the label that says Solomonic Gate. But this is not the Solomonic Gate, this is the gate of Ahab and Omri's time. The Solomonic Gate is this one. And we'll see why that is in a minute. So that is an Iron Age gate from Iron Age 2A, stratum 5A4B. So that's supposed to be the Solomonic gate, but it's not. And this is the true Solomonic gate down there. When we look at that gate, it's a beautifully made 
ashlar cut stone gate with a cobble floor, bays on both sides leading to the outside, finely cut stones. And what I want to show you is this pilaster here from the right hand side. Everywhere you look at this gate you see one, two, three layers of cut stones and then a layer of cedar beams that run through before the next set of stones are built. This is for earthquakes to allow the building to move and breathe, to flex. Okay, so they put the cedar beams between the stones and it's three blocks, cedar beams, three blocks. Now look at 1 Kings 7, 9, 12. All these buildings of Solomon were of special stones cut to measure, trimmed on the inner and outer sides with the saw. In other words, they were ashlar blocks. And on the outside, the great court had three courses of dressed stone around it and one course of cedar beams. So also had the inner court of the temple of Yahweh and the vestibule of the temple. Three courses, one, two, three, and a cedar beam. This is the only time at Megiddo that we find this architecture. This is stratum eight, by the way. In that palace, in one of the rooms, they found a hoard of ivories from the furnishings of the palace. And this is one particular very famous piece of ivory, which shows a king arriving in a chariot with two Shasu Bedouin captives, and then a military man, and then a psalmist or a harpist playing music, then a queen and the king sitting on the throne, some more servants, and all around the king are doves. Let's go in a little bit closer. Here we see, now look carefully, that the king is seated on a throne made of lions or sphinxes, winged sphinxes. The queen, wearing a peculiar hat, is offering the king an Egyptian lotus flower. And we have a psalmist behind singing songs in the court. And all around, doves. What do doves signify? Peace. What does Solomon's name mean? Shalom. Shalom, peace. So is that a sign telling us who this king is? Sitting on the throne, either side of which is lions, which is in the biblical text, with an Egyptian queen offering him an Egyptian lotus, and a psalmist behind him singing the Psalms of David. Well, this concludes our segment with David Roll and his lecture series, but it doesn't mean you have to stop listening to David Roll's lecture series. You can actually get them on our website at PatternsOfEvidence.com. This series has four hours of material with Q&A, and it's just loaded with lots of great information. And I'm sure you'll enjoy it. So you can go to PatternsOfEvidence.com to order it for yourself 